Welcome back. Today I will be adjusting the chain tension on the drive chain as well as cleaning and lubricating it. But before I get to that, I think it's finally time to christen this bike with the logo. Okay, it's on there. There's a few air bubbles, so it doesn't look exactly perfect, but it, it's more of a symbol than, you know, having it be a perfect aesthetic piece. These stickers are actually handmade by my sister, um, who's an artist. I can actually link her channel down in the description. If you like art, if you love paintings, go check her out. It's not quite centered. It's a little askew, but hey, close enough, right? As you can tell by the shadows, a little bit of time has passed, but that's good because in the meantime, I had a package arrive with parts for the motorcycle. So let's see what I got here, because if I'm honest, I kind of forgot what I ordered. Oh yeah, parts for the, for the hand guards. Looks like it's just metal parts, I think the, um, the plastic shields will be shipping separately. And I know I got a couple other things while I was at it, but again, I can't remember off the top of my head what it was, but this is great. So I'm going to be adjusting the chain because I think this might be on the tall side of slack. Oh, it looks like we have a cat that came here to join me. This is Adelaide, one of our cats here on the property. And she's very friendly, but unfortunately she'll have to go. Okay, where was I? Yeah, so the chain I think has a little too much slack that way. It also might be a little worn. Oh, here she comes back. All right, we'll just ignore her. Uh, I think it's got a little bit too much slop laterally and I can also pull the chain a little bit off of there. I don't think it's super bad, but I will check the spec. If it's outside spec, I'll tighten it a little bit. The slack specification on this bike is 35 to 45 millimeters. So you're supposed to check it in the middle of the chain with it, you know, with it slack. So I'll set this at the high end of the range, 40 millimeters. And if I can get the chain to go above the top of the tape measure, then it's out of spec. So according to this, it's in spec. It seems a little sloppy to me, but what do I know? So since it's in spec, I guess that uh, frees up a lot of time because it means I don't have to adjust anything. However, I will make sure that everything is retorqued properly um, just because it's something you should do periodically. So I'll show you how to retorque these. These are the only tools you're gonna need. You'll need a 12 millimeter wrench, 14 millimeter, 19 millimeter. 14 millimeter with a torque wrench set to, what is it, 21 Newton meters or 15 foot pounds. And you do need a deep ball socket. And then a half inch drive torque wrench set to 88 Newton meters or 65 foot pounds with a 24 millimeter socket. This one can be the shallow, you know, the non-deep well. Here we have a classic uh, janky Casey setup here. Uh, this is only because I don't have a bike stand yet. Um, this bike I don't think can have a center stand without um, having a skid plate underneath. And I haven't gotten the axle lift ones yet. But uh, the kickstand in a block of wood, you know, it's more of a trail side way to do it. So take your 19 millimeter, put it on the far side for the axle bolt, put this side on the axle nut. And again, this is set to 88 Newton meters.
That's all it takes. Now I don't, since I didn't do any adjustments, I don't need to change these. However, since I'm already here, I'm going to loosen and retorque them. Again, just to make sure that they are torqued properly. And I just made sure that the adjustment nut was secure. I take that back. This needs to be 12 millimeter. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, now I'm back with the correct size socket. So that is 21 Newton meters or 15 foot pounds. It's not really that much torque. And I'll repeat the same thing on the other, on the other side, but you don't need to see that. So to clean the chain, I will be using WD-40, world's most Let's say popular water displacer for oil. Ah, the good stuff, red line. Um, I've seen different things about what you can use for a lubricant. Uh, this seems to be a good middle of the road in terms of cost, um, you know, how much it attracts dust and debris and how well it lubricates the chain. Um, so I have this stuff sitting around. I figure I'll throw it on for a little bit if I don't like it. I can take it right back off. Then for the cleaning process, I got a $1 nylon brush and some rags. I know like cotton fabric would probably work better for this. And I do have a couple of t-shirts underneath my branch, but I'll start with this and if I need to change, I will. Never when you're wiping this down, never be on the incoming side of the chain because if your hand gets caught, this will slip, slice your finger off real good. To get the rest of this stuff dried off, I'm gonna use an air gun. Um, the nice thing about an air gun is it works very quickly, so if you're impatient, this is a good tool. However, the downside is that because you're using you know, such a high pressure, if you put it up really close, there's a high pressure area, um, you can end up shoving um, oils or debris and stuff into a place it wouldn't normally be able to go, and that can adversely affect the life of the chain. I'm gonna go for it because I'm a little more impatient than I am in terms of caring for the absolute longevity of this exact chain uh, because while chains and sprockets aren't um, cheap, they're definitely not prohibitively expensive, so I, if I have to replace it, you know, that's okay with me. Another thing that you could consider doing is removing the, the chain guard back here and the forward chain guard. Over here, I think it's just at the edge of the frame. And that can help you wipe down any excess oil or, you know, in this case, WD-40 that got up in there and might sling off as soon as you start riding it. And you really want to avoid getting any oil or grease on your tire because that will be um, not good for your grip and you'll probably fall. So I've got the chain pretty clean here. I even cleaned up the chain guide as well as I took the front, I did take the front cover off which just requires removing a couple pins from the cover here. And this also gives me a chance to inspect the front sprocket and it looks pretty good uh, just as I'd expect. And so I cleaned up this, there's also this safety guard that I wiped down and as you can see here there's a bunch of sand and grit that was stuck in this part of the casing so I was able to clean up everything up here and it's uh it's not bone dry yet uh, but I will try to get it as dry as possible before I put on the lubricant everything is back together I'm ready to start uh, oiling up the chain. I also, while I was in there, because I have to remove this, I re-greased this with the 
good old Blue Molly. Um, I believe that Honda recommends just a normal GL2 or GLI2, you know, just your normal um, high quality grease. I like this stuff because it has uh, a large amount of molybdenum, molybdenum disulfide. It's a tongue twister. It has a lot of molly in it. And because this isn't a part that is going to be turning a lot, it's just going back and forth occasionally, I think the, uh, the blue molly is, a good, uh, is good for this application. So all these covers come off really easily. Just make sure you have some really big Allen keys. So next I'll be putting the gear oil on the chain. I'm going to try and use it as sparingly as possible so I don't have as much slinging off. And then once I'm all done with that, I'm gonna make sure I wipe down the tire of any grease that might've accumulated on there because I don't feel like sliding around on, uh, on my new bike. All right, I think that's pretty good and oiled. And I'm just gonna get a new rag and kind of wipe off the excess because I don't want this stuff slinging around everywhere because it'll make a massive mess. I also hate how much this stuff stinks. And it's not as bad as when it's used out of a transmission, but uh, all that sulfur and other additives just don't smell the greatest. All right, that's uh, nice and wetted down with the gear oil, but uh, I'm sure a bunch will still sling off. That's inevitable. Um, within the first few miles of driving, especially once you get up into those higher speeds, a lot's going to sling off no matter how you uh, how well you try to get it, you know, um, dried off. But the only way, like if you dried it off to the point where none is going to sling off, it's going to be too dry um, for the purpose of lubrication anyway. So. I'm not gonna worry about it. I think it'll be just fine as it is. So I'll wipe the tire and get it back on the ground. Well, that's it. All back together on the ground. This is not difficult by any means. In fact, this is probably one of the easiest things you can do on, the, on your bike. And if you own a bike and you can't do this, um, I'd say it's absolutely necessary and worth your while to learn how to do it. Um, really just comes down to put a solvent on it that's safe for the o-ring chain wipe it off let it dry put some oil on doesn't get much easier than that in fact it's easier in some ways than uh, even doing an engine oil change although I much prefer doing I much prefer doing an engine oil change to this by a long shot so Hopefully you found uh, some or any of that informative with the uh, you know, alignment and retorque of the axle, cleaning of the drive chain. And don't forget, we finally put our christening sticker on the front of the bike. So with that, I'll see you next time.